So team keep it clean we got some important updates with the baltimore ravens but first before we get into that we got some personal news tomorrow is my wife and i's 11th year wedding anniversary so that's going to be a very very special day also for any of those who are going to the baltimore ravens and Bengals game the thursday night football game where the ravens gonna be wearing all black yeah, we're going to be there, too. So I look forward to seeing all of y'all. Uh, going to be doing a special tailgating with Jack Settleman. You know, the, the, the guy who does the podcast with Marlon Humphrey, the Punchline Podcast. Uh, the owner of Snapback Sports. Yeah, so that should be fun. I know some other Ravens content creators are going to be there. So that should be a lot of fun. Now, um, get into these Baltimore Ravens. Yesterday, John Harbaugh. Uh, he let us know that uh, there were some guys missing from practice. But he said, no, it ain't nothing serious. It ain't nothing crazy. It ain't nothing to worry about. It ain't nothing to be concerned about. And I told y'all, like, hey, we're going to hold Jonathan to his word. If it's nothing to worry about, okay, but we still going to worry just a little bit. Not too much, but we're going to see how the practice report looks on Thursday. And we see it. Uh, Because on Wednesday, Odell Beckham Jr., he was out. He did not practice. But on Thursday, he was a full participant. Not even limited, but a full participant. So that's a beautiful thing. On Wednesday, Gus Edwards. He didn't practice. Said he had a toe injury. But on Thursday, he was not limited. He was a full participant. Another beautiful thing. So, uh, Adafi away, uh, Ronnie Stanley, both of them didn't practice on Wednesday. They were both full participants today. Uh, so, guys were coming back. So, that, that, that is beautiful to see. That was really, really nice to see. I, I, I like it. We love it, as a matter of fact. So, John Harbaugh, thank you. Well, thank you for the most part. Because not everybody who missed practice on Wednesday returned on Thursday. Uh, because Morgan Moses, uh, he did not practice on Wednesday and he did not practice on on Thursday either so that's something to think about now uh, Marcus Williams who he returned to practice on Wednesday and he also practiced on Thursday he was limited so he is not a full goal as a participant yet so I'm not gonna expect him to play in this game and really like <laughs> it ain't no rush take your time Mar- please take your time Marcus Williams we do not need you to rush back again Because Geno Stone is holding it down. Like I said yesterday, like, Geno Stone needs to be on that field 24-7. Do not fix what's not broken, Baltimore Ravens. Please don't. Geno Stone has been killing it. Hey, Marcus Williams is a baller now. I ain't taking nothing away from Marcus Williams. But Geno Stone, that's the guy right now at safety. And I'm sure they're going to have their their three safeties on the field at the same time and whatnot. I know a lot of people suggested that with Geno Stone and Marcus Williams and then Kyle Hamilton, like, rushing the pass and what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, Geno Stone, he he needs to be out there. Um, Now, Daryl Worley. Daryl Worley, who is on his way back from injury reserve, they uh, added him to the roster. So he is officially back. But in order to add somebody to the roster – you got to take somebody off. And the Baltimore Ravens released Kevon Seymour. So Kevon Seymour is out of there. He is a free agent. But if he clears waivers, uh, Jeff Zrebeck did say that the Baltimore Ravens have one open spot on the practice squad. So if Kevon Seymour clears waivers, then they can just sign him back to the practice squad. And then he'll be right back on the team. And that, that would be my expectation. I would expect him to clear waivers. But, hey, you never know. You never know if a team is looking for the right corner. I mean, look at the Browns. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Browns were like, hey, Kevon, you come in here. If they claim them on waivers because, you know, Browns, they just signed James Prochet. Uh, they just signed King and Drake, too. So they, like, really investing in a lot of old Baltimore Ravens. So maybe Kevon Seymour might end up in Cleveland. We'll see what happens with that. But hopefully he can clear waivers and come right back. But anyway. Uh, somebody who was added to the injury report who wasn't on there yesterday has been Cleveland. They said he is dealing with an illness. And Rocky has seen, uh, I guess I missed this yesterday, but for the past two days he didn't practice, and he's been dealing with an illness as well. Now, uh, our guy, Keith Mitchell, uh, who is on his way back officially, I, I think he should probably play this game, uh, but he practiced in full the past two days. So I, I think Keith Mitchell is going to be good to go. I think Keith Mitchell will be playing it. I, just my opinion, I think he'll be, be, be playing in this game. Uh, we ain't hear nothing officially official, but I think that he'll be there for sure. Now, um, Odell Beckham Jr. has some uh, a very interesting quote that was going around um, that was highlighted today. Uh, and he said, I can count on two hands how many people in this locker room need to get the ball. There's a lot of guys. There's only one football, and there's seven eight guys that are looking to get it and we're all hungry and we're all happy for each other when the next man gets it now that's important because 
Football is the ultimate team sport. It's the ultimate team game. Now, there is a lot of I. There's no I in team, but there is an I in statistics. And and when you're a real team player, yeah, you can still want your statistics and whatnot, but you're still going to be happy when other people get theirs. And uh, with Odell Beckham Jr. saying that, it was very important, um, in my opinion, that he said this, especially for PR, with his own personal PR. The reason I say that is because during the game, um, against the Cardinals, Odell Beckham Jr. He he drew a flag. It was on. Oh, beautiful pass from Lamar Jackson uh, in the end zone. But Odell Beckham Jr. He got interfered with on the pass. So they called pass interference. The ball got placed at the one yard line, I think. Uh, but Odell and Odell Beckham Jr. still had a chance to even make the catch, even with the pass interference. It would have been tough, but he still had an opportunity. But he did not make the catch. And right after that, it's like your team they get the ball at the one yard line. So it's not a guarantee that they score, but <laughs> most likely they're going to score. They got Gus Edwards. They probably going to score as long as they give it to him. Um, but Odell Beckham Jr., right after they threw the penalty and they put the ball at the one, Odell Beckham Jr. goes to the sideline, heated, takes his helmet off, throws it down. He's angry, screaming and all that. He was really upset. And a lot of people, they question, oh, is Odell Beckham Jr. really a team player? Is Odell Beckham Jr. in it for himself or is he really in it for the team? So with Odell Beckham Jr. saying this, I think that's very, very important uh, for him. I think it was very, very important for his image that I know a lot of people, they feel this, a certain way about Odell Beckham Jr. already. Um, and they feel like he is not a team player. But another thing that he said uh, in his press of the day, he said, I didn't come here with the expectation that I'm going for 2,000 yards. He, of course, did not mean that literally, but you got what he's saying. He said, we're trying to win a Super Bowl. And that's real right there. That's real. Um, now, <laughs> I know Odell Beckham Jr., like, look, he he got 15 million. Like, most of his contract is guaranteed, man. He got three mil in incentives that he can earn. Like, he got the one mil if he gets the most catches on the team, one mil if he gets the most yards on the team, one mil if he has the most reception touchdowns on the team, or touchdown receptions on the team. So he got that extra three mil that he can earn. But Odell probably thinks, like, look, yeah, he, he ain't on pace to get that at all right now. Uh, but if he somehow ended up getting even just one, then to have, what, 16 mil? At, first off, to have 15 out of 18 mil guaranteed, oh, yeah, you sitting nice right now. You sitting real nice. And all the money that he done earned in his career thus far, and he's going to get even more, but he's sitting at a real good spot right now. But it would make it even better for him, even sweeter for him, if he can get even just one of those incentives. Obviously, if he got all three. I don't see it happening right now, and he's not trending in that direction, but things could change. You never Things could take a turn in a good way for him, and we hope that it does because Odell Beckham Jr., like we, we want him to do good. We want him to do well. Uh, I know my guy Simply, um, shout out to my guy Simply, AS10, man. He is the best in the business at making all those highlight films, all the cut-ups and whatnot, adding the fire music to it. But he made a highlight tape of all the, of Odell Beckham Jr., all the penalties that he's drawn as a Baltimore Raven thus far. And I, I said, oh, Simply, you're just so creative, man. You come up with highlights literally for everything. Um, but he made that, and it's like with Odell Beckham Jr., it's, it's, it's like they're, they're getting closer. They're getting closer. And Todd Munkin talked about it today. He talked about uh, Lamar Jackson, Odell Beckham Jr., their chemistry and whatnot. It's getting closer. They, they, they get, they're getting there. It's going to take – it's just taking some time. That's it. Um, so with, with Odell, um, we know like – like I, I said it myself that I feel like the Baltimore Ravens, they didn't really sign Odell Beckham Jr. for the regular season. They signed him for the postseason. They also signed him to, to, for them to keep Lamar. Uh, for them to even get him to come to the negotiating table like that. But they signed Odell Beckham Jr., in my opinion, really for a postseason, for later on down the road uh, to where the Ravens seem to fall apart the most. Uh, they signed him for then, uh, and it's important uh, that they get their money's worth. But you also you also sign him for now, too. And you, uh, like my guy Nitro would always say, you know, he said you don't pay 15 mil for mentorship. You don't pay $15 million just for leadership. No, you, you want some production as well. And I'm sure they certainly do. And the ball, they, they've been trying. Lamar been throwing him the ball. They've been, they've been trying, but it just hasn't quite happened yet. Uh, but you could tell they're they getting there. It's getting closer and closer. So hopefully they continue to build on everything uh, that they've been doing. So because that's important, man. That, that that that's really really important and um with Odell Beckham Jr like he obviously wants to win but if along with winning like you you want to be a contributing factor to your team winning uh so with Odell like i, I get the frustration 
because you <clears throat> you don't want to be a non-factor and you don't want to be somebody that's detrimental to your team overall. And not saying that he's detrimental to the team, but I I think his frustrating has his frustration is just it's been boiling up over time for him being not necessarily a non-factor because he hasn't been a non-factor, but him just not having contributed enough, him not uh, getting enough catches or as many catches as he would like or him just not making enough big plays like he is used to in years past. Because, again, it's humbling, man. It's humbling. Like, I know in life as as we get older, like, we may go to the basketball court or something. We may go on the field or something, play football, play soccer, or whatnot, and whatnot. But if if you out there and you remember your, your glory days when you was a lot younger, what not, oh man, I used to be able to do this, I used to be able to do that, I used to, oh man, I used to kill him out there. But then you get older and you try to do the same thing, it's like, ooh, <laughs> his body don't move the same like it used to. That can be extremely humbling. So with Odell Beckham Jr., it, I I think this whole situation has just been humbling because he hasn't been making the plays that he's used to having made before in years past so when those plays start we, we got like a couple but not much thus far and it's been eight games already but when it happens I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it I really am I, I'm, I'm surprised I really thought his first touchdown would have been by now like if you would ask me at the beginning of the season oh Odell Beckham Jr. gonna score a I, yeah of course I would have thought he would have at least scored like at least three by now like eight weeks at least like three touchdowns for sure but he hasn't he hasn't. So it's got to be really frustrating. Just again, especially because that's what he's used to. He's used to making plays. He's used to being in the end zone. He used to celebrating. We ain't got to see Odell Beckham Jr. dance not one time in eight games. Think about that. Think of, we ain't got to see Odell Beckham Jr. dance not one single time. Not one. So, yeah, man. We, we all waiting on it just like Odell Beckham Jr. is. So Hopefully he'll get to that soon. Something that y'all can get to soon is these varsity jackets. I mean, you know, the link is right down there is in the description. Uh, you can check them out. Um, you can go to standwithusclothing.com. They got the gray and black ones, got the purple and black ones, got the white and green. They got all the colors you need. They fit to size. And if you want an extra little perk for these jackets, if you're looking at the jackets and you're thinking, oh, man, should I make that move? 10% off. Use code engraving. And that'll make the decision that much easier.